Stock market continues to aggravate bears. Tech-laden Nasdaq refuses to stay below its main support level. The Treasury auction today dropped the dollar. Today's appetite for the six-month Treasury seemed insatiable. Several names we should go over. Tesla, NVIDIA, ZM. Tons to cover here. A lot of names moving after hours. But let's just get into the basics. Another day of frustrating the bears, to say the least. Uh, I don't think that we should have had overtly high expectations today. But I will take this little victory and the fact that we are over the lower trend line. I think that is significant. And I think it's worth paying attention to now. The MACD, we can obviously see, is still rolling and pointing down. But the histogram has changed colors from dark to light. It's a start. It's not the be-all, end-all. But it is something. Now, is that something we should hang our heads on and act on? No. Neither is today's action. But at the end of the day, we still held. We did gap open. We did go higher. But we still held 380, and we are still sitting in here. So as much as we are looking at this and saying we're in trouble, within three to five days, if you break a key level, you need to get back over it, just like we did here. But we did get back over the 55. Now, I don't know what tomorrow brings. Nobody does. But I can tell you right now that this is hanging in there. And this is pretty significant. If we zoom in on the hourly, you can see the gaps. And that's really all we're doing, gap filling. There's a little distinction here on the hourly that I'm going to show you. But the MACD is pointing up trying to get over that zero line on the hourly. We'll see how that goes. You have plenty of time, but you can see these gaps. And all you're trying to do is gap fill and gap fill. It's not really the signs of a market that is going to go up or a market that's going to go down. We cover this in the video I released yesterday, which I will link at the end. And I suggest you watch it. It really explains why we're doing what we're doing. And I think it's going to continue for some time. Now, if you just take a look at some core levels here, Yep, I don't know that we're getting back up to here anytime soon, this 4066. I'm not sure. I will say this. You keep running in right across that 4020 level, and you just keep rejecting over and over again, and you've been rejecting since last week. So that's obviously a key level for us. But if we look at this downward trend line, we absolutely should have broken today and sold off. And you would expect to see follow through on the breakdown, and that's not what we got. We ran up, we retested a level, we rejected that level. Here's your bearish engulfing on the hourly, forms a flag. That flag break forms a dragonfly. And this is what is really frustrating traders. It's You're not getting the same level of drop when something is confirming. In other words, this is an H and that is a confirmation H. And when it's happening, you're not breaking down anymore. You're just gap filling and then you're going sideways and they're just bleeding out the option players. So if you were an options player, and you had puts over the weekend, and you came in this morning, you had a bad day. Even if you held them and you were break even at one point uh, on just where the index level was, the implied volatility just absolutely is crushing them. So it's definitely something for us to be aware of. While we do have this MACD that is pointing down, and this is not ideal by any stretch, we are in here and we are battling. And I think that's very important. You have a lot of wicks here. You have this that just did not hold at all. Complete and utter rejection, right? Then you have a pretty classic doji. Goes sideways, flips above it, but can't get above the closing price. Stops, gaps down, gaps up. So they're really just batting us around more than anything at a key level, but we're not breaking. And I think that's the important distinction. In other words, we didn't break the 200 and we did not break and stay below the 55 and we did not stay below the trend line. That's all we have right now. Now, does that mean that we're not going to be between 420 and 380? We very well could be between those levels for a period in time. And we're just going to have to see how that plays out and then make a more informed decision. But I would not rule this out. If we zoom in on the dollar here, we can see a couple key things. This is absolutely glaring at 1130. We can see that huge wick just standing right there. You have that sell off from the open just straight down from 830. You have that reversal pattern right here, and then you just start breaking up, rally at 11.30, and then after 11.30, that was it. It was over. So what happened at 11.30? We had a bond auction. That bond auction, we saw some buyers step in and start buying the bond market. Now, if they're buying the bond market, then that means they don't think interest rates are going where they think they're going. Now, this is the six-month bond, and you can see the yield and how it dropped, which means they were buying bonds ever since that 1130. If you get super technical, this is where you closed 
right up here, right? And now you come into Monday and you start trading right in the open. And then what do you do? You just have buying the whole day. Since you were able to buy the six month treasury, you hit buying all day. And even into the auction, you had buying. It never stopped. To put this in context, you can see the wick. So we had buying all day and we had what I would consider a reversal in the dollar. Now, it's pretty slight, but I'm just going to point it out so that you can see it as well. In other words, what they do is they just take out that higher high. So the previous day's close was 105.32. You come over here and they take out 36. So what they do is they just tick it up. So you get the super technical traders that jump right in there and then they reverse it. This is usually the sign that you're setting up for a bearish hook reversal, which is a very simple pattern. So this would be our swing bar. In other words, this is the bar, which is the pattern reverses. You can see one, two, three up, does the overhang and then gets people in, closes near the low of the previous bar. What you're looking for is something like this to happen. If we can get something like this to happen, then you could start seeing more pressure on the dollar. If we get more pressure on the dollar, bonds will rally, equities will rally. Now, if we take a look at the NASDAQ, came right down and you held. It's, it's really hard to, to say anything else, but that that's exactly what happened. Here's the 200. Here's our doji sitting right there. And we flipped that and we flipped the 293 level. So it's really hard to not say that people bought bonds today. They sold the dollar and they bought equities. The idea, and I explained this in the, the previous video, that we're just gonna go melt higher or, or fall down. It just is not gonna work that way. You can see all this uncertainty on here and you can see how that uncertainty is being handled. It's being handled with gaps, wick rejections, and just very simply luring people in on gap downs and then them convinced that we're just gonna start breaking these levels. I'm not saying that it's not going to happen. What I'm saying is nobody knows if it's going to happen, but if you look at the action over the past five or six days, this bar, should have led to massive selling, a massive long red bar down, and it did nothing like that. You know, this is a shooting star at the bottom of a pattern, and when you break like that, that should really lead to some massive selling. Instead, we closed at 303 on this bar, and then the, the next bar, we're closing at 301. You're closing at a 50 basis point move. The next day, we're gapping down about another 1%, Having a bad day is considered one and a quarter, one and a half percent right now. This was one and a half percent kind of day. And then we just starting to have these bodies that are going sideways. And they're not really getting a lot of meat on the bone, but you're getting meat in between to trade intraday, right? That's really where the moves are coming, intraday moves more than the bodies on the previous day. A lot of that has to do with the action and the skittishness of investors at this level. Tesla, we have investor day coming up on March 1st. It is usually a sell the news. I see the MACD already starting to somewhat try to roll here, but this is a cup. Here is our handle and we're flipping it on a day where the market was bouncing all around and we obviously could have gone down considerably on Tesla today. It's up almost, what, 100% from the low. Actually, after today's close, we're back to 100%, a double. This easily could have broken today, rolled back down. And what did we do? We gapped out of the handle and back over support. Well, now it's support was resistance. And I think that's pretty critical. I'm not saying we're going to stay here. I'm not saying that we're not going to fall apart going into the you know, investor day. I mean, those investor days are usually sell the news. But if you look at what's going on right here, it is what it is. And I think that we just need to trade what's in front of us. I, I can't be any clearer about that. I, you know, I've been doing this for a while and, and that's what you have to do. You have to trade what's actually going on, not what you think is going to happen. You can have an opinion and a bias, but if you trade off of that, if it's wrong, it's going to be an issue. And you can start seeing how that's going to start weighing on people. You can see that 206 and three quarters level right in there, held that all day long. Looks like we came back, tested, flipped, went, retest, and then went again. So you have some minor levels in here that we're holding. And you can kind of see where these peaks are that we should be paying attention to on the 15 minute. You can see how 210 would be a level that I'd be concerned with. And if we can flip then, the real next major one is really going to be up here, right around that 214. So these are levels that we can see in a very short period of time. I would not want to be short this going into Investor's Day, considering the strength that we're seeing in this market right now. The market's not cracking. No matter how much people want it to crack and talk about how bad the market is, uh, it's just not breaking down. I mean, here's the MACD on the hourly actually pointing up and getting back over the zero line for the first time since it rolled back 
under it. And this was the last time that we were up was the 14th. And you can see how that worked out. I don't know how investor day goes, and I'm not suggesting that this is going to be that kind of move. All I'm simply saying is that we kind of have to pay attention to when you have something that is so glarish of a bullish signal executing on a short term time frame. The idea of being short that uh, should be somewhat horrifying, frankly, unless you're going to be short you know, into these rips and you're, you know, you're confident enough to short into the rips. Right now, you're shorting an hourly flag breakout and a retest. It's not where I'd want to be going into an event. And you never know what Elon's going to say. You just don't have a clue. And this is exactly what I mean that, that we're seeing is you, you fill a gap, right? And then you come back and now you have another gap. So now we have this island sitting right here between these two gaps. And we didn't even fill it today. And there's really no reason why something that's up $30 or 10%, such as NVIDIA, is not filling its gaps. This should have at least gotten back down to that 232. I know I would have liked it so that I could have picked some up, but it did not do that. And I think that that's a very important distinction on what's going on here. We're not cracking. Despite the amount of people that, that are telling you that we're going to crack, we're still not cracking. Does not mean we don't crack later, but if you came in with that bias today and you were buying puts, you had a really bad day. One thing I always stress to everybody, you can have your opinions, but you have to trade what's going on. Now, Workday's quarter was not bad and they talked about increased demand. They beat earnings by 10% and revenues came in higher than expected. But we're just seeing the stock sell down a little bit. I'd watch this one very closely tomorrow. I wouldn't be surprised to see something like this trade up. Now, if you look at how we closed, how we dropped, and then the reversal that we saw in the last 15 minutes, I think this is absolutely glaring that this has that kind of potential uh, to just gap fill tomorrow and go. We didn't stay down. We actually rallied as people started to understand the call. They're the ones you want to watch because now you have shorts trapped and they're hoping, right? You can even see this gap after hours. And I'm not privy to how we gapped up from here all, all the way up a dollar and a half on this name. I'm going to have to go through the call and listen to it again. But I'm not really sure what happened here and why we got a dollar and a half gap up. But you did. And then what happened? Right. You can see this like that's a not a joke of, of a gap. So I'm trying to figure out exactly what happened there. And I um, spent some time digging into it to see if it's even real. Sometimes they do these misprints after hours. Let's drill in there. Yeah, I'm not so sure that we're going to find out that that's real. Let's drill into it a little more. It might just be an anomaly that's throwing off the chart pattern. Kind of looks like it if we really drill into it. So I'm going to have to play around with it a little bit more and take a look at that after hours. But what I would suggest either way is the stock's up. So whether or not we're here right now or we were ever there, uh, just look at where you're at right now and how you're going sideways versus where you closed and the amount of people that are still underwater for those that sold or shorted. It's not where you want to be. Now, Target should be really interesting tomorrow morning, 630. This is what we're looking for. We're looking for $1.40 and $30.67 billion in revenue. Now, see what's going on right here. Doji's after Doji's battles, right? So you have this gravestone followed by almost a dragonfly. Reversal encapsulates that bar, tries to break out this morning, cannot, closes down, and we have earnings 6.30 in the morning, sitting right under a golden cross. See, see what the market brings tomorrow, but be aware, this will also move Walmart. And Walmart had, in my opinion, a really good quarter, and nobody really believes uh, when they were as negative as they were. Now, we'll see what happens with this, but we did not take out a lower low today. We hung in there, and Target will move Walmart. If Target has a bad quarter, the, way, the number one thing that I will look at is an entry into Walmart. Before we get into the number one stock that's moving after hours, MRNA. We know MRNA is in free fall. You can see the drop down, the rally. I actually shorted this today and did okay with it. But look at the end of the day. And that market on close time, when the orders start coming in, which are get me out, make sure I'm out by the end of the day. See how much selling you started getting into that 330 number? It just became straight selling. Just get me out. I don't care. That's very important to notice. So I'd watch this one tomorrow. I don't really see where your support's going to come in. I think you're going to come in maybe around here. Maybe, maybe that's going to hold. But I I'm not so sure. I really am not so sure that's even going to hold here. You know, it's just incessant selling. Usually with a drop like this, you see some kind of buying and you're just seeing, you're seeing absolutely nothing. ZM after hours had a great quarter and is trading up 
into the conference call. So they surprised and beat by 50 cents and they actually beat on the revenue side. So not only did they beat, they raised guidance and they cut staff considerably. This is doing all the things that it needed to do and it needed to do them a long time ago. So we're only gonna go back to September and looking at this right now, but you're hanging in there and you're starting to try to work your way up through this 80, 81 level. And you can see up here. Now, ARC will also benefit from this tomorrow, but between the raise guidance and beating, we have not really been in a position to see something like that from this company. Now, the 200 day is up here, 85, 86 and a half. And then down here, we actually have the 55 at 72. So it's not ideal. I'd, I'd like to be over the 200, we're not. I would not sleep on this tomorrow and, and I think ARC's gonna get a bounce out of it as well. This video is a little longer today and I think I'm gonna start making them a little longer. Eventually put some chapters in here. The longer format is a little more detailed and I think it's more helpful. It just takes me longer to do. Comment below if you prefer the quick, you know, short eight, nine minutes, or if you like this longer content. I find that the longer content's gonna be helpful. It might only be helpful to me, so it really helps me out if you comment below and just let me know. If you haven't watched Saturday's video, you need to watch it. At least watch the first five minutes where I start explaining the last hour of trading how it's changed over the past two years and why it's so significant right now. Everybody have a great evening. Trade to win tomorrow.